What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Learning Quick. Super excited to have another amazing guest in Debbie O'Brien for the second time, uh, which is very exciting, uh, to come on and talk about uh, her transition from uh, Vue to React and all the different things that come along with that. Uh, I'm super excited about that. I think this will be really interesting. But do you want to give uh, people just a quick intro to who you are and what you do before we get into it? Sure. <laughs> so thanks for having me here. Um, yeah. I don't know, how do, where do I even start? So basically like a year ago, I was a developer advocate for Nuxt. A lot of people know me from that. Uh, and I was speaking at conferences, Nuxt conferences and all sorts of conferences about Nuxt because it's like Nuxt for me is an amazing framework and I still believe that. Um, but then I did change jobs and you kind of say like, why, you know, because why did you leave the, the dream job? But I did um, to take on a new opportunity, uh, a new challenge. And it meant basically like becoming um so before I was like you know up here I'm like top of the castle mm -hmm. right you know next not an expert I don't ever consider myself an you expert heard it here, in anything. you heard it here first Debbie the expert yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like pretty good pretty know what mm -hmm. I'm doing to then basically like know absolutely nothing yep. and be a junior developer again practically and, and go into the react world because um everything is built in react in the company we're working in so I'm working at bit at the moment which is a Solution for component-driven development. So it's about how to easily be able to build components and share components and have components isolated so that you can build applications very easily um, with, with versioning of components, et cetera, et cetera. But everything is in React and we do not have Vue support yet. So I haven't been able to touch Vue from a work perspective. I will in the future, but just not yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically um, I had to change from Next to Vue or sorry, from next to uh, React, and that's where I am now. But it does not mean, and I have to be very clear on this, it does not mean that I don't do Nux stuff. It just means I don't get paid to do Nux stuff, which is very <laughs> different. <laughs> I think I think all of us have, have the opportunity to work with anything we want. It just depends on whether or not we get paid for it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Which is, that, I mean, that's the beautiful thing, right? Like Nux, I think was a perfect opportunity opportunity for you at the time because you were already using it you're already excited about it and then you just got paid to do it on a regular basis and share yeah. with other people and that's Which is cool <laughs> yeah it's perfect and that's what like developer advocate ends up for people that enjoy that combination of stuff it's just a perfect opportunity because you get to create content you get to go to conference we, conferences we were talking about all the exciting ones that you have coming up yeah. and um and do stuff that you're excited about and get paid for it yeah that's basically my job. Great. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. But the, the funny thing was that I was in Nuxt as a developer advocate and I never traveled to a single conference as mm. a Nuxt developer advocate. And I never got to see the Nuxt offices and meet the rest of the Nuxt team. Obviously, I know the Chopin brothers very, very well mm -hmm. and Puya and a few others, but like the rest of the team, I never, ever met. And, and it's crazy world we live in that we change jobs in this world and mm. never physically meet the people we work with. It, yeah, it is very weird. Um, I have gotten to meet a few people on my team uh, starting over the summer. So I met a few people and I met one more a couple, a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, I'd never met anyone on my team. Um, so I am very excited at some point to meet more of them. Uh, comment in the chat, by the way, from Ellie, uh, that they are doing the opposite, mainly a reactive, but learning Vue with new tools and teams. And this is still the thing, like, I still say every time, like, I, I want to spend more time with you. I just run out of time to do all the things that I want to. But what yeah. was like, maybe starting there, like, what were what were the things that you enjoyed about Vue as a framework? Maybe specifically Nux built on top of that. And some of the, I know the community of that, I think was, was a big part of it for you that you enjoyed. But what were your general thoughts on like Vue and Nux before making the switch? So for me, Vue is easy. Right. And I think that's really important because I came from a background where I was a front end developer that didn't have a lot of JavaScript. I didn't have any JavaScript like until four years ago. Mm -hmm. So I had to like learn JavaScript very later on in my career. And then to basically like start off with a framework. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I did learn React in the boot camp and then in the, you know, when I was studying four years ago. But it was like you build one application and then you don't touch it and ever yeah. again. So that's not really learning. Mm -hmm. You just get a taste of it. The same with AngularJS. I built an application with AngularJS, but don't ask me to do it again because <laughs> I don't. I, I can't remember anything. AngularJS, but, um, especially that's that's a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, Vue for me was just something that like um, I seen it and I understood it. It made sense to me. Everything just seemed like I can do this because it extracts away the JavaScript understanding. So you can just like you have like this sugar coating on top. 
And it means like, you know, like a V4 in view, right? So V4 item and items. I understand that V4 item and items. Now in, in JavaScript is a map. Why is it a map? I don't understand. What is a map? A map is a, it's Google Maps, right? So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so my brain just goes, I don't understand what you mean. Um, so I just love how Vue makes it simple. And when I was working in the agency, one of the things I had to do was take my team and bring them away from, you know, old school technologies into the separation of front end and back end and into a new framework. Now, which framework are you going to teach them? Well, at the time, uh, Vue is for me, you know, it was the easiest and the documentation are great. And it was very easy for me to bring a team into Vue. And then Nuxt makes it even easier on top of that. So like, you know, Nuxt just separates things out. Everything goes in its folder. Mm -hmm. You have a pages folder. That's where your pages go. That makes sense. Components go in a components folder. Layouts go in a layouts folder. It just is easy to follow, which meant anyone could come along and actually just sit in those meetings, even the like marketing teams, um, and they knew what was going on and they could like tweak things and they they knew they could understand the code. So um, what's Nuxt for the React dev? Like Nuxt is the same as Next, right? Very similar kind of approach, right? So if you're use, using Next, Nuxt is, they're very based off each other and uh, do very similar things. Um, so you can do server-side rendering or you can do static pages, um, but it's also just forget server-side rendering and static pages, just the actual way that it structures everything in those folders for you. It's very opinionated. Mm -hmm. And that at first kind of makes you think, no, I don't want you to like create my router for me. I want to control the router file myself and know what I'm doing. And then you go, why do I want to do that when it's going to do it for me? <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not that common that, or at least for me in the stuff that I build, it's not that common that you need to do anything other than what Nuxt and Next uh, will do automatically yes. for you. So yeah, I think, I think we've seen lots of tools come out that continue to do some of the monotony, some of the like boilerplate code for you. And for the most part, people really enjoy, I certainly do. Like the faster I can build an app and the less code I have to write myself for something that I don't need to specifically control is almost always a win for me. Exactly. And when you're teaching people and you you're working in, for an agency, you have deadlines, you know, you, you're not doing R&D where you've got time to just play with things. Mm -hmm. You need to get projects out the door. And you're basically telling them that you're not going to build WordPress websites. You're going to build <laughs> Nuxt projects and, and it's going to be faster and you're going to get things out the door and it's going to be more performant and it's going to be newer technology. And they kind of go, we don't believe you because WordPress is very quick and easy. And mm -hmm. we're like, and you really have to, like, I have to prove a point here. So, so yeah. So that was my main thing of using Vue. Um, but also I just enjoyed it and, and the people, the community is great. So obviously I was speaking at conferences, I was meeting all the people and it's very easy to reach out to people in the Vue community. And I remember literally in a customer's office uh, where we're basically deploying our Nuxt application and I'm sitting there at won't deploy and I'm like freaking out because I've like made all this, you know, I can get this, this can be done. <laughs> And I'm, I'm literally sending Sebastian Chopin a message on, on Discord and he's answering me and actually just helping and basically saying, yeah, like it could be this, try this. And like, we got that deployed. It was actually their right. servers. Um, they weren't using a Node.js server. Their backend was using something else. Don't go into that because I don't understand too much <laughs> of those things when it comes to like, you know, DevOps stuff. But um, the fact that people are easily approachable yeah. just makes you say, right, you know, I want to use this again in the next project because I had a problem, but I was able to solve it with help of, you know, the community and the creators themselves. And that's, that's something that's really cool. Yeah. And that's, that's like the epitome of DevRel, right? Like that's why we have it is to have the company then be a real person that you can talk to, that you yeah. can reach out to. Like they're like, I hate posting questions into a forum. It just, it's great to have that. Like it, it really is. And to have a immense amount of people to, potentially answer questions, but it's, it's so much easier to go to the person that works at that company and ask them like, Hey, I'm working on this thing and they can give you a very specific uh, response and really nail down exactly what you need in a much quicker turnaround. So like I do that with people that I know, I reach out to them directly. And yeah. then people have reached out to me over the past couple of years with also your specific questions. And oftentimes it's just something, Oh, I think you missed this thing or, or one that's great feedback. Like we should be documenting that in a better way. And then that yeah. sort of relationship, I think, makes a huge difference. So I like no surprise at all that that was a big factor in like your appreciation for Nux coming from the appreciation of like their community um, aspect or involvement. Yeah. Yeah. And we then like um, hired one of the uh, members of the Nux team, um, Alex Lichter, who 
was able to like come on board with us and teach us and like go through our code and give us like a code review and help us make the code better because I wasn't perfect. I wasn't amazing. And I was the one teaching everyone else. And I'm like the highest person. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not good enough to like, you know, make sure that this is all good. So, so yeah, being able to like take them on for like a consulting um, is amazing because then you, you know, you're learning from the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And that's a great system as well. Like a great thing that they have. So that was really that for me, that was valuable because that's how I improve my skills so much. The company paid says even better. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's the perfect part of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and and that's like like quick start documentation and stuff is good but once you once you hit a problem and inevitably regardless of what framework or or tool you use you're going to hit something like just having that quicker um response to be able to handle that thing and move on with your project is essential um yeah interesting thing that you mentioned was the idea of maybe not even like needing to specifically know how to write a for loop or a for each loop in JavaScript, but view then having those annotations to be able to take those over for you. I actually have had like a different perspective, but I think it just depends on what background you come from. Like I was fairly good at just vanilla JavaScript. Like I had spent lots of time intentionally there of, of learning that. And by the time I got into React, it was easier for me than uh, like Angular at the time because I didn't need to memorize these like new directives, right? Like if I wanted to write a for loop or a map, I knew how to write a map and it was just kind of natural. So it's interesting. I think like, depending on, do you have a decent amount of vanilla JavaScript experience, then react might make more sense. If you're just getting into JavaScript and you're going straight into a framework, I think view makes more sense with those directives because they kind of like teach you those concepts along the way. But I think like across the board, most people seem to think like, view is just easier especially for beginners and it it reminds a lot of people of angular js back in the day of the simplicity yeah um that people have really enjoyed yeah it was kind of like they took you know the best of angular js and you know it's inspired by angular js and by react and kind of put it together and created view now obviously view 3 has gone even like you know into another level and now it's like there's a lot more complexity to it for sure but you can still use those simpler view 2 stuff Mm-hmm. That's still like the options API. You can still use that. And the composition API then takes it to that kind of JavaScript-y more level. So you then can kind of like do more kind of cool things like hooks we have in React. Now we can do that similar thing in Vue, which we didn't have before. So yes. that was kind of like. So I just I just watched a tutorial, a Vue 3 tutorial. Um, it was actually on um, Travis Media's YouTube channel. It was a super based in Vue 3 tutorial. And I realized, and I, is it, is it like a is it a ref thing that's basically the equivalent mm-hmm. of U state and that's how you um yeah. that's one of the hooks to track state. So I thought that was really interesting. And and Vue, I feel like people that love Vue love Vue. Like even people that love Vue are more passionate about Vue than people that enjoy React. I feel like like they're just they're yeah. very proud of Vue, which is really cool. Um so it's kind of interesting to see like the concepts like hooks and React now like being adopted in Vue of people saying like hey, this is it's just working really well. This is another thing that we can add to this framework and this ecosystem. But it's also cool because from my perspective as a reactive, now it would be even easier to jump into Vue because I can kind of feel like I'm in a familiar place with um, with like that basic instance of hooks at least. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I mean, React has done an amazing job, right? So when something evolves, then mm-hmm. you know every Everybody framework learns off it. each other, yeah. and exactly. So it's great. So let's start, did Vue and Nux for a couple of years at least. Um, and then you took the new role and you're starting yeah. from scratch, which is like, has to be so frustrating, I think oh in, my in some ways to like, to yeah. be so comfortable and to to feel like, like I can build stuff and I'm really good at this. And then to go and then you're starting from scratch again. So what was like, what was that like for you, that transition, especially early on to to React? It was horrible. Um, it was like, <laughs> like it really was. I couldn't even build a component. I'm like, come on. Like, you know, when I tried to take my website and build my web- website in React and I was mm-hmm. like too much, too much of a like difficult job. It's like, okay, start slower. But you know, like the way Vue separates things out right into one single file and all your HTML is kind of like very much your HTML and your JavaScript stuff is like down at the bottom. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like very easy to work with. Now, all of a sudden I'm building a component and a component is a function. So the first thing, that I'm like, I'm, I'm writing functions now. And I'm like, okay, so I, I can do this, but then it's like return. And then depends on what you put in the return. Are you gonna put like, you know, 
you put like a semicolon at the end then everything breaks and you don't know why and like you just I just got so frustrated it was really it was really hard um and and mapping I mean I literally I I think I put it in a tweet or something and I was like what is the React version of V4? I really thought like everyone has a V4 and React was or four and or four didn't work. And I'm like, what do I need to use in React? <laughs> That's hilarious. I've heard for what it's worth, I've heard that like over and over again from people about because that's like the first thing you build, right? It's like a to-do app. And so you build a component that takes in a list of to-dos and then you iterate through them and display them. And I remember one person at FedEx when I was there, he gave React a try and he literally just stopped the tutorial and his efforts because he was like I, I couldn't get the map thing to work and it yeah. is like I think it it's helpful to have done that a lot in vanilla JavaScript and then it, it translates a little bit better but it, it's definitely a weird mix of like having having the brackets and all of a sudden you're just throwing in regular JavaScript into the middle of your yeah. um into the middle of your template in JSX um so I imagine that definitely takes some getting used to and speaking of brackets, like my fingers would constantly type like, you know, quotes mm -hmm. and I should be typing brackets and yep. I couldn't get my fingers to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm just typing it and it's like, oh my God. And then I didn't even have my, my um, VS code set up. Right. I was using a view theme <laughs> by Sarah mm -hmm. Drasner, which gave me different There's highlighting view... for React. Oh, like a <laughs> VS view... code theme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So my VS code theme was like not showing me React stuff, which was making it more difficult for me to mm -hmm. kind of pinpoint, you know, oh, right. yeah. things like that. So to change like the theme um, and just little things that I didn't have set up, like, you know, that to like look for stuff. Um, but it was just like, yeah, I think I almost needed to do like a, there should be a course like moving frameworks, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, there's the the million dollar idea for people. And again, like I think it it's still it still is cool to think about the future of Vue and Vue three, um, and the similarities now between the two. So, um, and I've I've talked about that a lot too. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like nothing is ever that unique. Like you see the frameworks playing off of each other. You see yeah. like cars across different makes and models and stuff. They like make the same changes with each other every year. Um, so it's, sure. yeah, it's not really a surprise that they like are definitely learning, um, learning and adopting, learning from each other and adopting those things as they continue to grow and evolve. But I have a funny story for you, right? <laughs> so as I was learning, it, actually a friend of mine, Tim Bennix, I don't know if you know him, um, mm -hmm. yeah. but also, also yeah, another so Cloudinary MD. Exactly. And Tim yeah. also had to move from his normal kind of view job into a React job. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so we were both kind of in the same boat, which was great because it was like, you know, okay, the two of us don't know what we're doing. So we decided <laughs> to go live and do a live stream together and try to learn React live mm. on a stream, which was a great idea. So it's like, right, we can do this. <laughs> and we literally live on the stream, tried to build a component. And like, oh my God, it was like a disaster. And <laughs> like, I swear to God, we went through the React docs and um, we, we failed. We failed completely because as we were doing this and they were all classes and we were like, what's a class? And like, yeah. I just learned what a function is. And now like, I've got to do a class. I didn't get this. And then people were putting in the stream in the chat saying, oh no, we don't use classes. Don't we don't use really classes. use them anymore. Uh, you're going to use a hook. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. Well, where can I find that information? And, and I'm you're like, like why, is, ah. why is that not in the documentation? Which has just been updated by the way, or, or at least is in beta, I think. The React docs are now either in beta or officially updated to use hooks instead of, yes. um, so instead of class components. This is the funny story because when we put that um, stream out there and we put it on, on Twitter, we actually got contacted by one of the members of the React core team. Nice, yes, that's cool. So they basically reached out and said, would you be interested in beta testing their docs, especially as you come from a fresh React user, from a fresh point of view mm -hmm. and, you know, and I was like, oh my God, yes, yeah, so this is amazing. So um, very, very early on, like a good few months ago, I went through just a, it was just a couple of pages, one section of the docs. And I started reading it and I was like, oh my God, why is this not out live? Like, just put this live now. Like, I actually understand these things because for example, and this is in the new docs, um, the, the brackets, the brackets are a window to JavaScript. And I was like, Okay, I get yeah. this. Every time I'm doing a bracket, I'm going into JavaScript land. This makes right, sense yeah. to me, right? Because I'm used to in view, you put the two like dots beforehand and then you're binding it, right? But mm -hmm. 
now I'm in, I'm in JavaScript land. Okay, cool. So little things like this really just helped me understand React by going through those docs. And it was like, uh, no, it was really cool to be an early beta tester um, to get to see those docs. And um, I'm going to jump ahead now. But the very, <laughs> the very cool thing is that then I became a member of the React working group. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> were we on? There was a... Uh... We were on one thing together. Yeah, we were. But I had nothing to add to that. Like, I don't think I said Yeah, you were word. just there in the corner. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, just, I I was just the face. <laughs> yeah. So That's then, right. um, then basically they asked me to uh, give a talk at the mm -hmm. React conference. I think this is this is my cue. Is that <laughs> the cue? <laughs> so yeah, the React conference is in December, and um, and I'm actually going to be giving a talk at the React conference, which is out of this world. Like it's it's completely like to come from Nuxt, and then like I'm now speaking at a React conference is incredible, and to be asked to like speak at it. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been collaborating with the React core team um, on my slides and on like I'm actually giving a talk on what I learned from the new React docs. And like, literally I'm still learning as I'm reading them because and I've actually gone through them all. They're amazing. If you haven't actually checked them out, really do. Um, they're still in bed at the moment, but they're going to be released in normal very soon. And they're pretty much, except for the hook section, I think that's only 5% finished, but the rest is like 95%. But it just makes sense to me because they actually start to teach you JavaScript and they actually tell you what a map function is. And they actually bring it down to the level of what I Somebody would have needed. Exactly. And that's that's what was missing, I think, from my point of view, from the old docs. Like I came into it not being a JavaScript amazing person and kind of like, go, oh, my God, I'm lost. And these new docs really just walk you through. Um, they're definitely amazing. But like, yeah, come and see my talk because I'm still working on it. I'm still iterating over slides. It's taken me so long. Um, it's going to be amazing because like the core team have like literally helped me to make it amazing. And I've learned so much from collaborating with them on like you know, how state works in React, which right. is like incredible to go from that level of like literally six months ago, Debbie does not do React and now Debbie's teaching state. <laughs> it's like, At how a, cool yep. is that? <laughs> well, and that's, I think that's the epitome of like, it's so easy. The burden of knowledge is a burden. I don't know where I'm going with that, but like the burden of knowledge is like, I will never understand what it's like to learn React again. You will never understand yeah what it's like to learn view from scratch again. Like you can try to remember and you can try to empathize with people, but you can't quite be in that state. So when you have documentation that's intended for people that are yeah. getting started, you need people that are just getting started that are in that, um, in that same state of mind and tech is making fun of my quote, the burden of knowledge is a burden. Um, yeah. so like you're the perfect person to do that. And, uh, so one, congratulations. The link is in the chat for people. If you want to check that out, there's some other awesome names I see on the list of speakers too. Is this a is this a virtual one or is this one in person? No, it's this virtual. Is online. Okay, virtual. so this is yeah. December eighth at twelve yep. p.m. Central. Interesting. They have. I wonder who runs this. They've got CST Central Time listed as their. So it's React Core team will be running it. So, okay. So wherever they're based, which is are they Maybe. based in San Francisco? I don't know. I don't you're you're part I, of the working group. I'm just I'm just. The I guy. don't know where people are based <laughs> these days. People are based all over the world. Rachel's yeah. in London, and you talk to someone from different parts, yeah. so you just don't know where. And they could be all spread out everywhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the React Core team that are organizing everything. It's going to be an mm -hmm. amazing conference for sure because you're going to learn about React 18, what's coming up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the new docs. I'm going to teach you about state. <laughs> I'm going to teach you what I learned. You're not going to learn everything about state. There's so much to learn. But um, but the docs have been a fantastic um. For me, like I was, I was saying to Rachel months ago, get these out now. These you need to make these live now. This is so like it's such a massive improvement for my opinion coming mm -hmm. from a, a new person into it. Yeah. Because it's things like children, right? I couldn't grasp children. I was like, everyone kept saying, Debbie, stop using props. Use children. I'm like, what the hell are children? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but you're not making sense to me. Just stop using props and use children. What do you mean, right? And like. <laughs> People just expect you to know that, you know, there's children all over the place. I'm like, what are these bloody children? Um, <laughs> and I think they make it more complicated because they don't just tell you. And like the React Docs makes it very simple. Mm -hmm. Children is just a hole that gets filled in. Like it's the parent as a whole and you put something in it. Like, couldn't they not have just said this to me? That would have been easier, right? <laughs> you've got you've got some awesome reactions to that. In the chat. <laughs> Tech gadgets. Whose kids are these? Max said he's going to clip it. No spare change is laughing. That's awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's, I think that's uh, just a great example of verbiage that people take for granted of understanding what it is and, and forget that like some people don't know what that um, is. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you um, from No Spare Change is what advice do you have for someone who wants to go the opposite path? So uh, react to view and you can just imagine maybe you're giving that advice to me because that's something that I need to do at some point. So any any thoughts on going the other way from react back to view? So there's a lot of like it's actually easier than when I learned view. There's a lot of great courses out there. And it really depends on the type of person you are. So how you learn and how I learn is very different. I know that's terrible. Like everyone says the same thing and stuff, but it, it really is true. Totally true. Yeah. I, I learned from Sarah Drosner's courses on front end masters. Mm -hmm. I think she's an amazing teacher and I learned everything from her because uh, you learn by doing, so you're following along, you're doing those um, code pens, et cetera. Uh, ben Hong is another great teacher mm -hmm. and he's got courses out there. Then view school, um, obviously like I do courses on your school, so they have amazing teachers. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've heard sorry. the teachers there are terrible. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to pull um, up that link, by the way. Is yeah. This, view school. I think they, did they like sponsor syntax, the podcast for a while? Oh, no idea. Okay. There was, there was a platform that was geared towards view that I think it sponsored at some point, but I didn't realize, um, I didn't realize that you had um courses on there too that's awesome yeah 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 i did the react reader course and a couple of other stuff um graphql as well mm -hmm. um oh sweet awesome and yeah and you mastery is another one and they have great courses as well and that may be the one that i was thinking of yeah okay so there's like so many different like they're the main kind of ones that i would go to so in mm -hmm. my company actually i would always have a license to like front end masters everyone had mm -hmm. a license to that and then view school and, and view mastery because you can I like to learn from different teachers. I mm -hmm. can never learn from yep. one person. So I like to jump between different ones and everyone, those three are very different. Um, again, you might just choose one and that's enough. That's, you know, up to you. The docs itself are very good. So if you're reading the view docs, they're very good and mm -hmm. easy to follow. I'm just not very good at reading. I like pictures and I like, um, I like, this is why I love the React docs because it's like pictures inside and I'm just a picture person. I like to see things visually. And, and be able to play with things live, which is really mm -hmm. important for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely the same way. Like I have to build stuff to make it real, but I watch a lot of video content. Um, yeah. Hence the reason I create a lot of video content um, myself too. And also if you're going to jump into view, I would suggest going straight into Nuxt. That's actually what because, I was going to ask you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Add yeah. On to that. Because it makes it easier because you don't have to worry about, you can then go back and learn about how view reader works. But you don't need to know that you can build an application, first of all, and then you can go back and kind of like, you know, further. Now, some people might disagree with me and say, no, you have to learn view first and then like go into. But it depends on what you what you're doing. Um, I would suggest and I have some courses um, from the Netlify Jamstack um, Explorers website. Yeah, so it's a whole cool. guide through on learning mm -hmm. Nuxt. And that will take you from start to finish. And then on my YouTube channel, as you know, uh, James has everything to do with like um, Nook stuff, right? So there's a lot of content in there as well. Is that, um, my, is that my next hint? <laughs> to throw in the, <laughs> throw in the um, I've got it I'm in not... the notes that you sent me. I will grab it. <laughs> no, um, no, it's totally cool. It's easy to just go like Debbie.codes, which is so easier to remember because I don't even know like the links to my stuff. I just say yeah. Debbie.codes and all the links you can are find there. everything there. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, even like my courses and stuff are on there. But definitely um, going the other way, definitely um, go to your next. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I haven't, I had thought that question to ask you. And I wasn't really sure on the React side what I would say, um, whether to start with just regular like create React app or go to Next.js. But I think, I think it does make sense because the the router being the perfect example I, I don't need to care about that right up front like i can mm -hmm. i can then backtrack exactly like you said and learn more about how that setup goes i don't yeah. really need to i don't think i think that's that's very reasonable advice and and that's where you see so many people are like won't would ne would almost never or definitely never choose to use regular view or regular react over next and next because it just gives you stuff out of the box that why would you not take it like you don't lose anything you can do all the exact same stuff from regular yeah. React review if you wanted to, uh, but you also can do a whole lot more and they take care of some of the stuff for you. So I think that I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, there's a question in the chat. I don't know if you um, specifically know this um, about the version. Is it the version of- Oh, you Nux? spelled my name wrong. Where? 
What did I type? Oh, that he didn't said- copy the whole thing. I, th- I <laughs> and 100%. Hold on. First, I know how to spell your name, but I apologize if that showed up. Second, I'm almost positive, and this is not a joke, that this is from my um, my computer keyboard. Like Literally, as I type, the stuff does not catch up because of streaming. I promise. I know how to spell your name, but I apologize for putting the wrong one. Let me grab the wrong one in there, or right one in there. Okay, I believe you. Go on. <laughs> and I was just moving too quickly. I promise. I anyway. Um. So yeah, I guess they're asking about the version of, so the Nux 3 is not the official latest, or is not an official version yet? Is it like in a beta thing or, it's better. or what's going on? Exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So Nux, Nux 3 is in beta. Um, it's there to kind of fix any kind of like things that might not be, um, you know, there the, the could be like things that don't work properly. Maybe, I don't know. That's why things are in beta, right? So that people can test it out. People can check it out. And also because the libraries need to catch up. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. a big, there's big changes between Nux 2 and Nux 3. There's massive changes, right? So we need to make sure um, the bridge is out. Yeah, the bridge is going to be like, the bridge is the connector between the two, right? So if you're using Nux 2, mm-hmm. you can use Nux 2 at bridge, and that allows you to use like Nux 3 features without you having to like, you know, oh, it's completely actually... go to Nux okay. 3. Yeah, interesting. Is but that... the migration tools haven't been built yet. So if you want to migrate from, view, uh, two, from two, Nux 2 to Nux yeah. 3, wait until these tools are out there because it's going yeah. to make your life easier because you're going to have to change all your fetch goals, for example, and how many times we fetch stuff, right? So that's that's a big issue. Um, but definitely like play around with it so that the next team can get feedback and can, you know, this library doesn't work with it. Okay, well, we need to like know that it doesn't work with it and mm-hmm. how to fix that. So it's like, we want people to use it. But in production, uh, I don't think you should use, and I think the next team will agree that not to use it on a production application because yeah. if something breaks, Maybe it might take like a week for the next team to fix something. And then your production app is going to be and manager is going to kill you and <laughs> everything's going to be a problem. So just be careful because, yeah, it isn't better. Um, yeah. I think they do have the dates on when it's coming out of better and stuff. So just kind of like follow along with what's going on okay. um, sometime next year. I don't remember the date. And when when did um, when did when did view three become official? That was in the last that couple was months, over right? a year ago. It was that long ago. Yeah. Wasn't it? I a don't. Year? I don't know. This, I think I'm... it was a year at the Amsterdam <laughs> conference. But okay. like my my time has just like disappeared with this whole COVID. Like, yeah. Because you don't travel anywhere. You just right. kind of like you don't really. But I think it's about a year that it's um okay. that so it's, it's been... out of beta. I think. Yeah. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tech guys <laughs> saying it's also beta. So in a week. No, V three is. But he, is yeah, he may better. be responding. The bridge. No. Oh, maybe maybe the bridge. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. anyway, so if you're using Nux three, yeah, Nux three. Be careful, don't go to Prod yet. <laughs> exactly, but that's like most things, except mm-hmm. Bit. We're in Beta, but do go to production with Bit. Yeah, because um, we have a different type of Beta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one guy is saying View three was September 2020, so that's fair. Um, yes, that's a year. Cool. And Ellie is asking why isn't View three latest on PM? Is Vue 3 not the default? Like if you just install Vue? I think it is. I think it is. Huh. Somebody mean, will have to check and confirm that. I don't know. 2021 flew by. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, we're almost done with yeah. 2021. I know, right? Yeah. It's it's crazy. Um, oh, that that could be just like somebody didn't update something in NPM. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I'll I'll pass that feedback on to the team, see if they can, you know. Why I have no, I don't know the answer to that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll, I'll f- figure out. I'll send a message <laughs> to someone who knows who knows why. I'll I'll, I'll ping Ben Hong on that. Yeah, ask, ask sort Evan that out. and crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there was a question from No Spare Change of Do you have a favorite feature or package when using React? Anything specifically that you really enjoyed in React? Um, well, package, I haven't, I'm not that good at developing React if you're doing packages yet. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm still learning React. So I haven't really worked with anything outside of, of React itself. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I love? Um, have you worked with Next.js? No, not really. Not no. Okay. I mean, I've lit- I've spun up a Next.js application mm-hmm. and I've thrown a component. I've yeah. created a bit component and thrown a component inside it. I can do that, but I haven't really built an application it, as yeah. such. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm literally just building components these days and building like an app is just a component. So I'm building everything uh, using bit, but mm-hmm. that's obviously just using React. Yep. Um, but yeah, um, hooks 
Hooks are great. Um, it's like easy to use a counter and set the state and change the state without having like stores and things like that to set up. So that's been really nice. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say hooks. Hooks are probably my Things favorite. But I, I can only build one hook. Like, don't get me. Don't like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've literally I've built a counter. <laughs> that's about it. Well, one but guy cool. was saying um, one thing that he's jealous about with React is there seems to be an endless amount of hooks that people have made that they share. And I think that's that's just um, part of the ecosystem, right? Like hooks has been around for a couple of years in React. So mm -hmm. it's more adopted view, I think, will be in a similar position after a couple of years as well, because people in the view ecosystem will be more used to that, um, that setup and that process. And we'll have more stuff that they can share too. Uh, but yeah, I think definitely having a plethora of uh, options to choose from from hooks um, is definitely definitely a nice thing to have. Yeah, I did see a website on it and then I kind of got like, oh my God, there's so many of them, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of cool stuff, which means then you don't have to like spend time building yourself, which is, you know, it's great, yep. right? <laughs> yep. uh, one guy's also saying in Vue 3 broke a lot of existing Vue plugins. That was a pain too. Yeah, that's, that's one of the tough things with um, mm -hmm. major versions major version changes is I think that's always going to be a challenge of breaking changes for previous packages. And like the stuff that you use, there's no, there's no, no guarantee that those maintainers have the time to continue to update that for every major change. That's definitely a struggle. I think regardless of uh, the platform. And I think this is like something that people are not aware of that the majority of these people that have built these plugins, et cetera, libraries that, you know, need to be updated. It's their side project. Mm -hmm. They have to go and do a full-time job. They're a parent, perhaps. They have other things to do. And then they're like, okay, now Vue 2 has gone Vue 3 or React has gone up to another version. I need to modify things. And it's like, everyone expects, oh, why is this not ready? Why is this not ready? This should be ready. Well, you know, hang on everyone. Like this mm -hmm. open source maintainers here. And this is where like, this is where like big companies should come in. And like, if you really need something, sponsor these people. Yeah. Um, so that they have the time because if you sponsor those, maybe they can work on it full time and they won't need to go to that job just to pay the bills. And then open source work could just, you know, everything would be quicker. Um, all those view plugins would have been fixed a long time ago, but people are working for free. Remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's, that's a tough thing in, um, in content creation too. Like, I think, I think from a content perspective, I am especially spoiled by YouTube, right? Cause you can, you could learn anything you want to, um, mm -hmm. from YouTube. Like I've started to do some like woodworking things. Everything I, I learned is from, uh, from YouTube. And so you have like this access to so much amazing free content that in some ways, like we go down this path of expecting everything to be free, but also we have to appreciate that people spend their time. A lot of content creators are doing this in their spare time as well. Um, and that stuff is valuable. So I've, I've had to kind of change my perspective, I think on like, it's worth, investing in myself to pay for content um and not only for myself to get quality content but also to support the creators that go through and spend their time uh creating that content yeah. um as well so yeah even though there are lots of things for free there's work that goes on behind the scenes that allow that thing to be free yeah for sure this, this is why i subscribe to those like front end masters for example mm -hmm. it's not expensive and like you get so much so much so many courses from so many amazing teachers like for a small amount of price and mm -hmm. like get your company to just buy a license like literally yeah. just say look you know you're investing in the person's future so everyone just like do it and then you know they'll have more money to pay more you know creators who then create more content everything just works that way like you know mm -hmm. it just needs to needs to happen <laughs> yeah front of masters and and egghead like such great platforms that also have those those highly respected uh creators creating the content like top in the world at creating content and for a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is for a year. Um, that's mm -hmm. actually something I'm pretty adamant about that companies should support their employees with, um, at the very least training, like like sending people to conferences is expensive, right? Cause hotel and flights and that kind of yeah. stuff. But for a couple hundred bucks a year to get them like access to, to learning opportunities that will change and influence the way that you do work on a daily basis is, is really important. Like I can't tell you how many times I went to work when I was at FedEx and I had done something in my spare time because I was interested and I went into work. I was like, oh, I've just solved this problem or I just saw this bug from doing this learning stuff at home. So providing the opportunity is, is just like nice for growth, but also practically like is going to help 
your team write better code, make better decisions on technologies, all the above. So I think it's really important to support the learning process for people. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, the YouTube content, you make great content. I haven't been doing a lot lately. <laughs> and people keep asking me like to, to create a, a video on Nuxt and Out, which we've been talking about for a year now at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, we I get a lot of requests and people saying, can you create this? Can you create this? And I'm like, I would love to, but I need to first learn it. Then I need to like, you know, create some sort of like mini demo of how it works mm -hmm. and then come on and actually show the video. Um, and there's a lot of time involved yeah. in doing that. So I would love to create, just sit there and just create content like in a second, hang on, just, yeah, I'll do that right now. It's done. But I think people think we know everything and we really don't. There, that's what content is, is a great opportunity to learn. Like I've always loved, if I, if I did content full time, I would be very similar to the Travis e Media um, approach where he just, he learns a new database, he learns a new language, he learns a new framework, he learns a new headless CMS and then builds these demos around it. Like I love, I love getting exposed to those different technologies through, yeah. uh, through a tutorial, but that takes a lot of time. And then you're looked at as the expert, like even if you're not, yeah. like they, people yeah. expect you to know hundred percent and just thinking about like his channel in particular, like he's all over the place with the technologies and stuff he uses. Um, and the, the amount of time it takes to learn in that is just really, uh, really incredible. Uh, tech edge is referencing, uh, Scott Talinsky's, uh, Scott try series on YouTube. So that's a really cool one too, where yeah. he tries out a new technology and it's like, they're short, I think like 10 minute videos or so just to give you a quick intro, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Tim does that as well. Tim tries, he has a couple of things. Oh, cool. And then yeah. learn with Jason as well is one of my mm -hmm. favorites where, you know, Jason like takes on something and like learns mm -hmm. it right and 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 you think jason knows everything well, he doesn't but by the end of the year he probably does because he's like from yeah <laughs> yeah those are those are great opportunities um i will actually be on learn with jason in two weeks so we can a half nice um so i'm looking nice. forward to that one that one should be fun cool how are there any like immediate next steps for you in terms of learning react like is there anything that you want to be able to create to say like i'm pretty comfortable with with where I've gotten to, is there any like milestones, I guess, in your like react learning journey that you're working towards? Um, for sure. There's so many. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I've like, I've got, I've, I'm very comfortable with children right now. <laughs> I've got them <laughs> <laughs> and uh, context as well. Like context was something that was like, you know, um, use a context. What is the context? The next mm -hmm. context is something completely different that like really kind of made things difficult for me. So, uh, I can use context now. I need to do better things with using the provider and stuff um and then state management so like my talk is basically a lot on state and um, for the react conference and then using um context and use reducer for state management nice and this is like really cool and there's a great uh, explanation the documentation page in the docs about it and i haven't actually gone through that um there's a lot of exercises in in the docs like like so code sandbox is built right into it so you can actually play around and then like if you scroll down then there's like what do you call it recipes or exercises mm -hmm. or solutions and stuff so you can actually play with something and then click on the solution which i do this all the time right i i just look at the the problem and i go i have no idea how to do that <laughs> i know i've read it all and i know i should know this but i have no idea and then i click on the solution and then i go oh i know how to do this now and then i hide the solution and then i actually build it mm -hmm. and then i click on the, the solution to see if i got it right <laughs> and then you match yeah just having that's that's the hardest progression i think with learning anything is knowing how not just knowing how to do the thing but knowing when to use what and yeah. figuring that out yourself that's all like in teaching a boot camp that's always the hardest part once you get to the point where you see a problem and you don't need the hint on what thing to use to solve that problem then you're getting really 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 comfortable with whatever that thing is yeah yeah so yeah that's my big thing is to look at state management a bit better and also um even just like hooks, right? So obviously I, I'm i very comfortable at this counter hook. I, I can use count, set count number plus easy. Yeah, I've got this. But can I put that into another hook to do data fetching, for example, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I want to kind of like use what I've learned to expand the hook knowledge to build more hooks and understand more about hooks um, and what else I can do with hooks because I've just like really only used, you know, use state, use mm -hmm. producer, like very minimal yep. things. Is use context, the... right? Yep. Is that you mentioned like the idea of use reducer, which goes back to, um, I think kind of stems from like the redux have made that like workflow really, really popular. I don't, I think there's a equivalent in view that I'm not sure what it is, but 
Is that like the idea of reducers? Is that something that you've used before or what made you uh, want to look into use reducer with React? Um, pretty much because I'm going through the docs page by page. Okay. And as I'm learning new things from the new docs, I'm literally like learning everything. And then I come up with this. Now, I, I've never used Redux, right? So I've heard of it, mm -hmm. obviously. I know it exists, but I have I couldn't tell you how it works or I've never even read the documentation. So I just know what it's built for, mm -hmm. but I've never used it. But the docs show me a way that I can manage state using context and using use reducer. Yep. And then I start learning that. Now, this is my... This is how I would use a state management kind of system, right? Because that's what React is teaching me. Yep. Then if there are other libraries and other cool things, then I'll learn them along the way if I even when I need them, right? Because it depends on what you're building. And um, but yeah, it's just out of interest. It just came up and I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then like it just makes me want to learn more because you mm -hmm. you learn, you look at something, you go, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> You know, I like didn't... batching. I learned about batching. I was like, I didn't, okay, I know I understand what this does. I didn't know it did that. How does, yeah. <laughs> and that, that stuff never ends. Like regardless of, like you'd still have those learnings in Vue and Nux. I'm curious how many people um, in the chat use, use Reducer and or Redux. I always thought, like I only went through one pretty long tutorial. It was actually my intro to React that used Redux. And I just thought it was like, overly complicated, uh, which is very similar to user, like the idea of like the um, dispatching the actions and then having the case switch or whatever on the actions to decide what to do. It's actually very similar. Um, and I've used that on my personal site, I think, to handle like my form submissions to update some of the logic there. Uh, but mm -hmm. it is a it is a good way to keep that stuff like really clean and isolated. And in theory, I talked about this on my newsletter today, like in theory, it's more testable that way because it's pretty separated out even though I don't write tests and I, I want to, that's one of the things that's on, on my radar to spend more time with. Mm -hmm. um, Ellie is saying that they got over Redux around the time hooks came out. So I haven't uh, used use reducer much. Yeah. I think a lot of people um, ended up going the, the hooks route instead of Redux a um, little bit simpler to implement so and then um, maybe not using use reducer. Sorry. So yeah, check out check out the docs with use reducer in context um, mm -hmm. because um, this yeah. is like obviously um, the hook use reducer and depends on what you need to do. Obviously, like yep. you might not need to like you know manage your state that much. You might just need to just be changing it. But um, but it's really really cool um, like tutorial kind of set out in the docs on that page, which I'm gonna do <laughs> over the weekend probably actually. Nice. Um, but it's it's really really worth looking into as a way to learn how to manage your state, even if you don't possibly need it. If you know it's there, I always like to know things exist and to know yeah. they're there and then decide, okay, do I actually, I know it's there. there. I've never used it. I've never built it. Like, like a lot of hooks. I haven't built a lot of hooks. Right. But I know what's there and that's what's important. I, that's, that's kind of my learning approach now. Like when I watch YouTube videos, I'm, um, or take courses, I haven't taken a course in a while, but when I'm watching a YouTube video, like I'm, I'm really just looking for exposure. Like I'm not following along doing hands-on. So I'm just looking yeah. for, all right, like what things that I'd not know existed that are there. And then, then that'll be in the back of my mind when I come across that problem later on. And I can be like, Oh, I remember I can use user reducer to help organize yeah. this stuff. Yeah. 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 I'm and also because somewhere. it's, it's impossible. Like I could never watch a like workshop or, you know, video and like code along at the same time or, Mm -hmm. like there's no yeah. way I'd have to like listen and like maybe write a note and then I go back and do it the second time is when I'd actually yeah. program along with that's, pausing a lot <laughs> yeah that's what I end up doing too like when I go through a course I'll watch four or five videos or something to just get a high level understanding and then try mm -hmm. to um, go back and do them kind of like batching them my wife um, is actually going through um, a course on Udemy the web developer boot camp by Col Colt Steel so she's just got into JavaScript uh, nice. which is very exciting. I think she's been like, it's a, it's a very slow, pro like, it's just tough when you're learning from scratch. Um, Isn't it? I think Isn't she's it? Enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I have a friend who is, I'm basically telling him he can have a better life than the life he has now by being mm. a developer. And he's a, he's a streamer on, on Twitch for gaming. So he's mm. like already got that personality. Yeah. He's already got that, you know, and, but he's like, where do you start? And it's a great question. It's like, you know what, where do you start? Because I could point him to the Nux documentation or the React documentation and go, there you go. But he doesn't know what HTML is. Yep. 
And you forget these things because I learned HTML in 1997, right? So I don't remember learning HTML. Like it was like, just like, you know, so having to teach someone like very, very, very basics, it's very hard to bring them down to that level and to kind of like remember it's not just about map and about frameworks. There's something before you go to the frameworks that you need to learn first. Yeah. Yeah. The free code camp is usually the place that I point people towards first. Like if you're, if you're completely starting from scratch, that's what I would recommend. And Jess mm -hmm. more or less started from scratch with the cold steel course. Um, and she seems like that is like, she hasn't gotten into frameworks or backend or anything yet, which she will. So it'll be interesting to see how, um, um, how she feels how at that jumps. point. Yeah. One guy is saying, I feel like a baby. I was four years old when Debbie learned HTML. <laughs> <laughs> Showing my age, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were just talking about how you go out to discos and clubs and stuff all the time. I know, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, let's see. We are, we're at the hour. Um, so we can kind of work towards a wrap up. Do you have any like final thoughts or advice for people if they're looking to learn React or Vue or going one direction or another that you want to share with people? Um, I would definitely say conferences are a great way of um, learning and also giving you an insight into if it's something that you like, if it's something that you want to kind of use as a framework or what, what mm -hmm. new kind of stuff is out there. So there's a conference coming up, Vue Toronto, um, which is online and free. And that one is coming up in November. And I also have a workshop that I'm doing that is paid because you got to pay to spend eight hours in a Zoom room with me. Um, but that one is is definitely worth it um, if you wanted to learn uh, Nuxt and your kind of company is going to be willing to pay for that. Then I definitely recommend that. And because it's online, then you know you, anyone can do it from anywhere in the world, so that's great. And then obviously, like if you're going to like learn uh, React or you want to just update your skills in React. The React conference, definitely check that out in December, which I know you pushed a link in the chat before, but sign up. These are all free, right? So you've got, like before, this was never free. Before it was like, mm -hmm. you know, you'd spend like a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred dollars, whatever, to go to these places if you have flights on top of that. And now you're getting all this for free. And you know, James, we're giving our time. I spent about 60 hours on my talk already. Um, it's going to be an amazing talk because of the amount of work that goes into them. So it's really, really worth uh, coming and seeing them and definitely check out the documentation the nuxt um three documentation is out as well um the new docs for nuxt the new website is out uh the new react docs are out they're in beta so just got better before you know react.js.org um docs are a great way to learn so try and use them and give feedback as well i think this is also great if something is out in beta nuxt react docs give feedback and say like you know actually this could be improved on i didn't understand this and that's how we can make things better. If nobody tells anything, anything, yep. we can't learn from it. Yep. That's another big part of the, uh, DevRel is getting that feedback and helping bring that back into, uh, to the product. So I added, uh, added a link to view Toronto. We put one in there for react conf earlier. Yeah. Um, your correctly spelled website was in there earlier as well. Um, <laughs> So yeah, thank you for coming back on. Um, I, we were talking about before, like we just haven't gotten to hang out in a long time. So that was fun. I know. Hopefully yeah. we'll be in person at a conference sometime in the new year. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and thanks everyone for participating. We had lots of good uh, comments and questions and insights. So thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, I'm going to send, I'm going to rate us over to uh, Clarkio's. Uh, oh, I love Clarkio. He's, he's, awesome. he's amazing. Yes. Like everyone just like sit and listen. Even if you only got five minutes, just sit and listen mm -hmm. for five minutes. Cause it's just, he's, oh, he's crazy. I he's love him. He's great. Yeah. And he has, <laughs> he has such good interaction with people that are uh, in his streams too, or in his, yeah. in the chat. Yeah. Um, so that is counting down. I'm going to send everybody over there. Uh, thanks again, everybody for hanging out. And Thank you everyone. See you later. See you later.